To measure average power of a laser beam, we typically use thermal sensors. These sensors absorb the light and convert it to heat. The heat, which is proportional to the beam's power, flows through the sensor and is measured. Assuming that the sensor was in thermal equilibrium with its environment when the measurement began, the only heat flow that should take place would be the result of an absorbed laser beam. However, in practice, the sensor's linearity with temperature is never perfect. We use several design tricks to minimize this effect, and then in our calibration process, we log data from each sensor as it heats up under prolonged laser exposure, so that any residual offset caused by the sensor's temperature is accounted for in the calibration. If, though, a hot sensor is located in a cool room, then heat from inside the sensor's body will flow outward into the room as the sensor cools down in an effort to reach thermal equilibrium with the environment. This heat flow will introduce an offset into the reading, since the sensor will detect and measure it just as if it were heat flow caused by absorbing a laser beam. In other words, you'll get a reading of power even with no laser beam on the sensor. Now let's consider two different cases of a sensor being hotter than its environment. Case 1. The sensor is hot due to external reasons. For example, the sensor was in a car in a hot parking lot and was then brought into an air-conditioned lab. As the sensor then cools down, the heat which originated in the hot car, flowing outward from inside the sensor, will be detected by the sensor and interpreted incorrectly as laser power, introducing an unwanted offset into the reading. To prevent this problem, one should wait for the sensor to reach thermal equilibrium with its environment before using it to measure a laser beam's power. Do not use the meter's offset button to subtract out this offset. The offset button subtracts the current readings from all subsequent readings and so sets the current reading to zero. Since the value of this offset will drop as the sensor cools down and approaches equilibrium. Just wait patiently for that equilibrium and only then get to work. Case 2. The sensor is hot due to the laser beam it's been measuring. A laser beam delivers heat, of course. The sensor is designed to dissipate that heat at least as fast as it comes in, but the sensor does heat up somewhat during the process, and when a sensor is operating at its maximum rated power, it can typically stabilize at several tens of degrees Celsius above the temperature of the surrounding air. You would expect that this should introduce its own heat flow and therefore an offset, right? Right, but this offset has already been accounted for. Remember, the offset caused by the heat of the sensor when the beam is on is built into our calibration. So do not use the meter's offset button to subtract out this offset either. This offset won't bother you. It's already been accounted for, built into the sensor's calibration. The bottom line, zero the sensor's offset only when it's in thermal equilibrium with its environment. Then you're zeroing bad offset, such as might be caused by a nearby heat source, for example. This zeroing of thermal offset, performed by pressing the offset soft key, should not be confused, by the way, with the meter's zero function, which is used to periodically zero any electrical biases in the meter's circuitry. That, it should be noted, is something we recommend to do every, say, two months or so for best performance. When using thermal power sensors, remember to perform that electrical zeroing twice, first without any sensor connected, and then repeat with the thermal sensor connected. For more information, contact Ophir directly or through our website.